Define benefit pension transfer fees and the hidden costs of cheap advice. Okay, so when you're out there and you're trying to buy a television, whatever price you get the television for is what you pay for television. It goes on the wall and as long as it's a genuine product, it's fine, it doesn't matter. When it comes to final salary pension transfer advice or any financial advice for that matter where you're investing assets, it's really important to understand that sometimes by driving your costs down, you are actually gonna be getting far less value and often destroying um, uh, your wealth. Um, to take a couple of examples here, we're not really sure why, but when it comes to finances, it's one area of people's lives that despite them not being an expert, maybe they read a couple of articles online, they think that they're very well suited to managing their own money or doing it themselves, and often are not willing to invest money to ensure that things are done correctly. If we take the example, if you're having a conservatory done at home, very often, say you get four different quotes, one's 5,000, one's 10,000, one's 15, 1,000, and one's 20,000. If you looked at the four quotes, you'd probably say, oh, the one for 5,000 must be very bad quality. Or maybe I'll go for the one which is 15,000 because it's very similar to the one at 20,000. I think the quality and service is about the same. I'm gonna go for that. Unfortunately, when it comes to financial advice, a particularly defined benefit pension transfer advice, which we already know is very expensive, and all the reasons why it's expensive have been outlined on the challenge before, we have to be very careful and understand why clients are often trying to look for the lowest possible denominator in terms of cost. What I can tell you from being in the industry for 13 years and being CEO at Cameron James is, when people sharpen the cost down by that much, you need to be very concerned about the underlying advice um, uh, which is being provided. Um, it's a little bit like saying when you have what is probably your largest, pen, your largest asset, which is possibly your defined benefit pension asset, transferring out of your defined benefit scheme is likely the biggest financial decision you will ever make in your life. You are giving up a guaranteed income for life from your pension scheme, which you will have forever. If you live a very long life into your 90s, you will probably get very good value from your scheme. It will also be passed on to your spouse, 50% um, of your annual pension. If you say in that advice process, I want to try and get cheap advice, it just doesn't make sense. It's like saying, I have something which is so valuable to me, but what I'm actually focused on is getting the very, very lowest cost in order to get advice on that. It doesn't work, in my opinion, or it's not very smart, in my opinion. If you think about when you go to a doctor, if you have something very difficult with your health, one of the biggest health issues you may have, something like, I don't know, something terrible, you don't go and type in, who's the cheapest doctor I can find? You type in who is the most credible, who is the most professional, who is the most reliable, uh, What if you're in a private or if at NHS, you're at least trying to do your research on which area, which hospital, which surgeons you think are best for you. Um, so you've got to be really, really careful uh, when trying to find cheap financial advice. I have, it's not that I'm totally against trying to reduce your costs. Over on the channel, you'll find an entire video dedicated on ways that I think you can correctly try to reduce your costs, but you've got to be really careful to not try to go with the lowest common denominator. If you find someone who's offering you pension transfer advice for £5,000 and someone else is £15,000, and both the firms have excellent online reviews, um, they're total specialists. You've spoken to five references from each of the companies and you think they're exactly the same. Of course, go for what might be the cheaper cost because the outcome is likely to be the same. But what you need to understand is what is the potential outcome of working with different advisory firms and don't try to go for the cheapest. I know you think to yourself that you're being smart and you're being savvy by trying to save your money. You're actually probably just creating yourself a huge amount of problems in the future. I know this because we have clients joining us here at Cameron James who previously took defined benefit pension transfer advice, many of which I must admit should probably have never have transferred their DB in the first place. They were hoodwinked, they were told about returns and 20% this and 20% that by all of their advisors in the past. They completed a better pension transfer, which they probably should have stayed in their DB scheme. So they've already made a massive financial mistake with their financial planning. Then they've been invested in normally subpar underlying funds with a DFM manager, expensive underlying TER, which is really important to understand, the total expense ratio of your ongoing portfolio. And they come to me and say, yeah, Dominic, I did a half million pound pension transfer um, uh, eight years ago. It's now worth 560. So, you know, it's not done too badly. I'm quite happy with it. And I'm like, what? In the biggest bull run we've ever had in history, a pension's gone from 500 to 560. They're happy. I'm like, because you haven't done your research, said, so, well, my pension, my advisor told me it's done really well against the market. I'm like, what market? Look at any single equity market over the past 10 years, we've had a big bull run. Like, what are you talking about? Your performance is horrible. 
So you've cost yourself, A, you should never have moved out of your scheme in the first place, potentially. B, you then compounded that by poor underlying advice. Now, in the international market offshore, there's a lot of bad advice. In the UK now, it's quite difficult to get bad advice, but it still happens. And particularly eight years ago, it was very, very common. Now, less common, but you still need to be um, uh, really careful. Um, another analogy which I always use with clients in trying to discuss this is, say your pension pot is worth half a million pounds, okay? Most people don't own a car which is worth a half million pounds, so let's tone it down by times 10, okay? If you had a 50,000 pound car, it would probably be a very valuable asset to you and you would be like, oh, this is my 50,000 pound car. I'm interested in reselling this in the future. I want it to last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I want to take care of it. I want to look after it. When you go to the garage and they say, oh, there's four range of tires you can have. You can have the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest ones, or you can have these other ones which are recommended by the manufacturer. Very few people will pick the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest ones because they're like, well, actually, no, it's my car. I do want to maintain and look after it. Same as anything else, um, your, your gearbox, your carburetor, anything you recommended. It's very rare that you say to the garage, please select me the lowest quality um, you can and put that in my car because it's, not, it's nonsensical. You're spending the money on the MOT. You're spending the money servicing it. You want to maintain it just in case you want to sell it or you want to make it last for the future however with people's pension pots they seem to think this is not important now this is not to say that using a cheap and a low-cost platform using passive um, uh, passive funds is a bad idea not at all we do all of that here at Cameron James but unless you are a pension transfer specialist yourself or you have a lot of understanding of how to invest an underlying portfolio, you really need to be working with someone who is a qualified, regulated and authorized pension transfer specialist. But the ongoing advice you receive is also high quality. You can check this out with our financial advisors by asking, can I speak to five of your testimonials? It may be a bit excessive, but can I speak to two or three of your existing clients that you've been working with for two, three, four, five, ten years to understand what their level of experience has been with you, what type of performance they've had. Now again, past performance is no guide to future performance because some of my clients did very well. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to do well, but it's a very good barometer of getting under the hood, so to speak, and finding out what your financial advisor is offering you. So if they're offering you ba bargain basement prices, typically I would run a mile from this because there is no cheap defined benefit pension transfer advice. Most financial advisory firms are exiting the market. They're not interested. The costs are too high. So when, for example, on a half million pound pension transfer, we have a 2% initial charge um, as outlined on our website, 2% up front and 1% ongoing. A lot of clients say 10,000 pounds for the implementation plus 3,500 for the authorized and regulated DB advice report. That's madness. And I say, well, actually, if you came in and looked at the excels of what actually comes out of that £10,000, when staff have to work for months and months and months on pay -E salaries, you'd be very surprised at the profit margins left in the industry. If the profit margins were absolutely gigantic, more firms would be joining the market to give advice than leaving the market. So um, that's my summary, guys. Uh, let me know in the comment section below um, if you have anything interesting uh, you want to add or share. And if you want to book an appointment with myself or one of our senior financial advisors, you can use the calendar link in the description below or you can head over to our YouTube channel. Um, sorry, you can head over to our website, do a bit more due diligence before reaching out to us. And as always, guys, take care with a UK pension asset, particularly when you're looking to reduce your costs.